Okay, I'm going to show you a blatant example of Anderson twisting scripture again, just like any false prophet would, twisting scripture and failing to compare scripture with scripture to defend his you know, non-dispensational heresy that we should still be putting sodomites to death. And of course, you know, being a sodomite is very wicked. Being a sodomite is perverted and an abomination. I'm not denying that. Homosexuality is very disgusting and wicked. But he wants to have a righteous government to put sodomites to death, which is not... You know, where it's not scriptural under the New Testament, but again, they're non-dispensational, so they think we should still be enforcing the law of Moses, which was given to Israel under a theocracy, to New Testament Christians under grace. It's ridiculous, but I'm going to show you the, the uh, clip where he talks about how Leviticus 2013 being fulfilled. Let's, uh, and show you how he fails to mention a few scriptures and compare scripture with scripture. Like talks about comparing spiritual with spiritual in 1 Corinthians 2.13. But it says here that in verse 17, here's the next thought. Think not that I'm come to destroy the law of the prophets. I didn't come to destroy Leviticus 2013. Isn't that what Jesus is saying here? I didn't come to destroy the law of the prophets, but to, I came not to destroy, but to fulfill. For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law, till all be fulfilled. Whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments and shall teach men so, he shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. But whosoever shall do and teach them, the same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. Listen to me. When Jesus Christ came and died on the cross for our sins and was buried and rose again, that was not a fulfillment of Leviticus 2013. Uh, book, book chapter and verse, please. And, and, and notice too how he's quoting from Matthew chapter 5. Matthew chapter 5 through 7 are dispensationally for the millennial kingdom. Hence why you have the reference to, to, references to kingdom of heaven. Let me show you something about that. Which is something his, he would not show his audience. Because the term kingdom of heaven only appears in the, in the uh, book of Matthew, the gospel of Matthew. And I'll show you what the kingdom of heaven is referring to. Matthew chapter 11 verse 12. And from the days of John... Oh, let me just go further up. And from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffers violence, and the violent take it by force. Hmm. The kingdom of heaven suffering violence and being taken by force. What is it? It's a physical earthly kingdom. Some more proof on that. Matthew chapter 8, verse... I think it's verse 11. Yeah. Matthew chapter 8, verse 11. Now, I understand this is, you know... Uh, interesting. This whole passage is a little bit interesting, but Matthew chapter 8, verse 11. And I say unto you, that many shall come from the east and west, and shall sit down with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. They're coming to a physical location to sit down. It's a physical kingdom. The kingdom of heaven is the physical earthly kingdom. So when Matthew chapter 7, or Matthew chapter, Matthew chapter 5 through 7, mentions the kingdom of heaven, the Sermon on the Mount is basically laws and regulations for that future kingdom. It's not for Christians today. Now there is obviously instruction in righteousness that can be applied to today. But when it comes to doctrine and you know code of conduct, it is laws for, for the millennial kingdom. But on this thing of uh, Jesus Christ fulfilling the law of Moses, you know, because he's saying, well, Leviticus 2013 has not been fulfilled. Um, Matthew, cha was it? Matthew chapter 5 through 17. Uh, so he says, Think not that I have come to destroy the law and the prophets. I have not come to destroy, but to fulfill. Hmm. Fulfill. Keep that in mind. For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, not, not, sorry, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall no wise pass in the law, till all be fulfilled. All be fulfilled. Now keep that in mind. What is being fulfilled? Well, turn to, if you have a King James Bible, obviously turn to the book of Luke, chapter 24, beginning at verse... 44 down to verse 47 and he said to them these are the words which I spake unto you while I was with you that all these things must be fulfilled which were written in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms concerning me then open he their understanding that they might understand the scriptures sorry to all the Catholics out there you don't need your priest to understand the scriptures then open he their understanding Jesus Christ the Holy Spirit okay the Spirit of God, the Spirit of Christ, will help you understand the Scriptures. He'll open your understanding. You don't need to rely on some cult-like, pagan, heathen, Roman Catholic priest. Thought I'd point that out. Luke uh, verse 46. Then, and then stand, and I say unto them, Thus it is written, Thus it is beloved, Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day, 
in that repentance and remission of sins shall, be, shall be remission of sins. Well, there's that word again, repentance. You know, repentance and remission of sins. Steve Anderson. Interesting. That repentance and remission of sins shall, shall be preached in his name among all nations beginning at Jerusalem. Compare that to Romans 1.16. You know, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. and talks about to the Jew first and also to the Greek. It went to the Jews first, then to the Gentiles after. Uh, then it goes down. But what's being fulfilled here? The prophecies about Jesus Christ and the typologies of Jesus Christ about him dying on the cross. So when it talks about being fulfilled, it's not saying about, oh, uh, it's not pertain because he's trying to make it seem like it's pertaining to the law of Moses. It's a weird argument. It's referring to, see what Jesus Christ is referring to in Matthew chapter 5 of verse 17 is the prophecies, you know, the law talking about him. And he fulfilled the law at the cross. He brought in the New Testament. You can read Hebrews chapter 9, verse 15 to 18. The New Testament did not begin until after Jesus Christ died on the cross. It's got nothing to do with, with, with enforcing the law of Moses today. And I'm going to show you proof of that. So, continuing. The scriptures were fulfilled that day. A lot of fulfilled prophecy. But nobody's like, Leviticus 20.13 just got fulfilled. <laughs> you know, when Jesus is born of a virgin, they're like, fulfillment of Isaiah 7.14. Right? When Jesus is born, it's like, oh, Isaiah 9, 6, fulfilled. Oh, Jesus crucified between... A bunch of stupid straw mining arguments he's trying to use. Two thieves, fulfillment of... He was numbered with the transgressors. Right? Everybody's looking at these things. Oh, by his stripes were healed, fulfilled. Yeah, you know, he's looking at all the... Out of Egypt have I called my son? Oh, yeah, that's fulfilled. Yep. Right? And when Jesus died on the cross, you know what else he fulfilled? All these animal sacrifices. Yep. Because he said, Behold the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. But wait a second, I thought Steve Anderson and this new IP people, cultists, are saying that they were saved by Jesus Christ's death, burial, resurrection in the Old Testament. Huh? He's contradicting himself. And by the way, you read just read Leviticus chapter Leviticus chapter sixteen, the entire chapter, animal sacrifices were part of your salvation. Steve Anderson. They were required to cover your sins. Just read Leviticus chapter sixteen and all the details are there. Filled. He fulfilled all these just hundreds and hundreds of burnt offerings and sacrifices. But can somebody explain to me how he fulfilled uh, thou shalt not steal? Or how he fulfilled uh, if a man lie with mankind as he lieth with a woman? And you see, what, what a straw man argument he's trying to do is here is that he's trying to make it seem that, oh, well, if Jesus Christ fulfilled the law, that means that homosexuality is no longer a sin. That's not all what's going on there, okay? It's saying that the punishment, we're not going out and stoning sodomites anymore. That was for Israel under a theocracy. We're not, we're not Israel. Although, of course, replacement theology, he, re replacement theology, he thinks he is Israel. So, makes sense. Both of them have committed abomination. They shall surely be put to death. Their blood shall be upon them. Folks, that has nothing to do with the difference between old and new covenant. You got um, okay, co again, another really big error. They confuse new covenant with new testament. See, that's another big error, too. And it's funny, too, because a lot of the modern versions replace testament with covenant. So it's kind of funny. It's funny how a lot of their doctrine is based off modern versions. Like how they use the Great Tribulation as a title for the time of Jacob's trouble. Like, that's not in the King James Bible, but that is in the modern versions. I showed that. It's in the NIV. It's also in the ESV, too. I showed that in videos about how, just, just search up my video, um, modern versions teach a common post-trib error. I showed that. And also the thing of, of, of changing, rightly dividing to other, you know, correctly teaching or whatever. That's also a modern version of reading too. And also changing New Testament to New Covenant is also come from the modern versions, the modern Catholic papal versions. Interesting. Covenant and the New Covenant. Old Testament, New Testament. Are there changes in the New Testament? We're not, we're not in the New Covenant. Okay, the New Covenant, you read about, you're reading Hebrews chapter 8. The New Covenant is for Israel. The New Covenant and New Testament are not the same thing. Bible says the priesthood being changed, there's of necessity a change also of the law. You know, because uh, obviously Jesus is not of the tribe of Levi, yet he's the high priest. He's of the tribe of Judah. It's evident that our Lord sprang out of Judah, of which tribe Moses spake nothing concerning priesthood. And so we see that there are things that are different in the New Testament, but guess what? Dressing and drag's not one of them. Jesus didn't die on the cross so that the veil could be rent between the men's department and the ladies' department. At I, I, I've never heard of anyone say that that the law that, that these things are no longer sin. I've never heard of anyone say that. See, he's setting up a big, huge straw man argument that, well, 
Uh, if the law has been fulfilled, that means we can just go out and commit homosexuality and do the sins of cross-dressing. No one's ever saying that. I've never said that once, that we that those things are no longer sin. Okay, Transgenderism, cross-dressing, all that perverted stuff, it's wrong. It's still sin. See, the, but the thing is, the punishment's of death. We don't, we don't, we're not going on enforcing that today. That's the big difference. J.C. Penny, Jesus died on the cross to rend the veil between the holy place and the most holy place. But the veil was not rent in the fitting room down at Kohl's or something saying, hey, now you can go wear uh, women's clothing, dudes. Right. And now, women, you can wear men's clothing. That, that's, that's ridiculous. Amen. That's preposterous. And you know what? No theologian has ever believed that yep. until now. No theologian in history has ever said, hey, now we can roll back everything about homos and cross-dressing. It's madness. It's, a, it's absurd. Oh, it's madness. It's absurd. Well, again, he's right, okay? It is true. Those sins have not... Those things are still sin. They're still abomination. They're still wicked. But the punishment... Okay, I'll show you that. I'll go. I'll show you from the exact same chapter he gets uh, Leviticus 20.13 from and show you that, yes, the punishment for these sins have been done away with in terms of, like, the physical earthly punishment. Now, there's still punishment in hell if you're lost, but the physical earthly punishments in terms of stoning and putting to death. Leviticus chapter uh, 20, verse 11 to 12. Uh, and the man that lieth with his father's wife hath, unco hath uncovered his father's nakedness. Both of them shall surely be put to death. Their blood shall be upon them. Leviticus 20, verse 11. Verse 12. And if a man lie with his daughter-in-law, both of them shall surely be, be put to death. They have wrought confusion. Their blood shall be upon them. What do you got going on there? Incest. The perverted, disgusting act of incest gets the death penalty. But notice verse 11, a man lieth with his father's wife. Well, again, what was the penalty? The penalty here was death. Well, go to 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 1. 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 1. It is reported commonly that there is fornication among you, and such fornication as is not so much named among the Gentiles that one should have his father's wife. The exact same sin in Leviticus 20, verse 11. The incest with your father's wife. But notice what's going on here. Because notice how Leviticus 20 verse 11 had prescribed death for that sin. Well, let's go down to... Because um, notice how Paul lumps it in with fornication. Incest is fornication. We'll go down to... Uh, uh, where is it? Verse 1 Corinthians 5.10. Let's see the punishment of this sin of incest. This person committing incest. Let's see what happened to him. Uh, sorry. 1 Corinthians 5, verse 9. I wrote unto you an epistle not to company of fornicators, yet not altogether with the fornicators of this world, or with the covetous, or extortioners, or with idolaters, for then, mu then must ye needs go out of the world. But then, verse 11. But now I have written unto you not to keep company. If any man that is called a brother be a fornicator, or covetous, or an idolater, or a railer, or a drunkard, or an extortioner, with such one know not to eat. And notice how verse 13. But them that are without God judgeth, therefore put away from yourselves, from among yourselves that wicked person. And notice too it mentions idolatry. Idolatry was also a sin that was punishable by death in the Old Testament. But notice what's going on here. What's the punishment here? The same sin that was given the death penalty in Leviticus 20 verse 11 is now just simply kick him out of the church, get him out of the church until he repents. It's different. The punishment is not the same. It's still a sin, but there's no longer the death penalty anymore. See, that, that's what he fails to realize. That's what, that's what he did not show his people. So, just a blatant example of how Anderson purposely lies and leaves out scripture and twists scripture to enforce his Roman Catholic, uh, what's it called? Roman Catholic dominionist type doctrine of, oh, we need to have a righteous government to put, put to death sodomites and other sexual perverts. Disgusting. Don't be deceived by Stephen Anderson. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with all the brethren. Goodbye. Thank you.